Hello friends and welcome to Saitama Stacker channel. My name's Dean, I'll be your guest today. Hey folks, it's been a crazy day, both for me and for other people out in the uh, crypto community. And so most of you I'm sure have seen my previous video and you know, today is not my shiniest moment. But um, in light of that, the day that I've had actually has caused me to do quite a bit of reflection and I'll share some of that with you. And I'm dealing with it just fine. You know, the amount that I actually had invested was pretty palatable. If you guys go back, you can actually see it in some of my previous videos. But essentially, it was about $1,000 invested. But the buying power was pretty massive. And uh, anyway, it's caused me to think quite a bit about just not this incident, but my thoughts on crypto in general and, you know, what I can do in the future to... Um, you know, be more prepared to um, to take care of myself, to take care of my assets. So I'll share some of that with you. I do want to uh, talk about some fundamentals and then we will uh, jump into a couple things that went down today. So um, first of all, let's just say for Saitama right now, again, we're dealing with more red zone activity here. Saitama is down on the day of uh, 36%. This has actually jumped up from where I last saw it. So um, I'm not honestly sure what's causing that much selling pressure on the token. Um, something I'll have to be doing some more research on. But uh, that's, you know, it's disheartening, you guys. We want to see this turn around. We want to see it move back up. We want to see the Cytomask wallet delivered uh, to give us some uh, positive news so we can move this thing in an upward direction. The CERTIC audit alone can being completed. Um, if it's positive result, we'll give quite a bit of faith to the project and we're needing some of that right now. So, um, you know, the, the crypto market in general, I mean, now we're looking at red across the board. Um, we haven't seen this for quite some time, but um, even the 30-day now, folks will be down 23%. So I guess the only comfort I can take in my coin stupidity is hopefully the people that took it are holding on to it and they'll, uh, they've lost some value there too. That's not much solace. Okay. I I've looked at the broader crypto market too, guys, and it's, uh, things are, are tough here. Um, you know, a lot of the coin, including the big ones, not just the altcoins, it's pretty much a red market. Um, there are a few in the green. Crypto.com with their new big deal, um, you know, taking over a sports arena. Uh, but aside from that, if you look at this, most projects are struggling right now. So uh, I'm guessing if you look at the fear and greed index, the fear factor right now is going to be pretty high. And some things are happening that make people distrust the crypto sphere in general. And so we're going to have to do a better job. Uh, our developers are going to have to do a very uh, strong job of giving people assurances that the project is safe, that it's uh, got a bright future. And all of the other 14,000 cryptocurrencies that have cropped up, you know, 4,000 since I started making videos, if you can believe that, in two and a half months. Um, they're not all going to be legitimate, okay? Most of them are not going to make it. So anyway, let's jump back over, look at what's going on here. Fundamental-wise, we've picked up uh, about 1,700 holders in the last 24 hours. Our market cap, when I did my show prep, we were ranked 83rd of all coins per the coin gecko top 100 and our market cap um pretty massive drops you guys from yesterday i mean we're talking 30 percent uh seven zeros four seven is our price um volume ticked up a little bit and when the volume's going up and the price is going down the burn will increase and so will the reflections so um, about 13 trillion tokens burned in the last 24 hours. Okay, so let's look at what might be causing some of the downward pressure on the market. Um, for one, you have coins like this that do beautiful websites. Now, this isn't one that I owned, 
but um, it had a partially doxed dev team. And the ones that were not doxed were basically playing the guy who was doxed. And this was one that uh, we were looking at for the Cytomask, um, you know, partnering or listing this particular coin. And today the non-doxed developers pulled the rug on 15,000 people. Um, the estimate is between three and eight million dollars that they would have taken from those investors. A rug pull is just simply when the developers um, rip the bottom out of it. They take all the coin, take all the value anyway, and they they just disappear. So this is what a rug pull looks like. This down here is what we would have called back in the day when I was working in um, the stock market, a dead cat bounce where it looks like, oh, maybe we're making a recovery. And then it uh, it just basically falls off and trails towards zero. So 98% uh, down in total. There's real, almost nothing left in that project. And these kind of things, you guys, are really, really difficult uh, on, on investors. I mean, I've been saying for a while, I don't like centralized government intervention, but this is a realm out here where the exchanges, if nothing else, I mean, it's that's why I guess it's decentralized is there's no governing body, but we need to set some kind of metrics and regulations and they're probably not going to do it. Uh, so I'm going to govern my own uh, self. So here's what I've decided. Um, first and foremost, I'm not going to invest in any undoxed projects. Um, if, if they, they're not credible projects, they don't have staying power, they haven't been around and we have a history with them or the developers are not doxxed, I'm not going to leave any money in those projects. And I hold one that's quite notable. I've talked about it many times, um, but I'm pulling my uh, liquidity and all of my token out of, uh, out of Shiba Inu. So I, I don't really have a reason to not, um, you know, that they've done what they've said they're going to do up to this point. But quite frankly, I think it's time for them to come out of the shadows and I'm just not willing to risk it anymore. I'm not willing to play the game where some anonymous person has the ability to potentially um, rug pull. And they can say, and they, you know, there's, there's other means and ways that they can make things secure. But for me personally, I'm just not dealing with it anymore. So I'm, um, I'm moving on from that one. The other one, like no crypto when tired. So really this morning, if you guys could have seen my situation, I rarely take medication to help me sleep. Last night I did. When I got up this morning, I had a full busy schedule. And during about a five minute window, I pulled up YouTube just to see what was going on. No volume on my phone. Saw the one, led me to a website, not thinking, and I got scammed. And so uh, no crypto when tired, no same day buys without due diligence. It's really getting crazy if you ask me what's going on in the YouTube space. There are so many influencers that are constantly shilling or they're promoting a new token. And, you know, they talk a lot about, oh, this looks like a great one to buy. But beyond that, there's, you know, they, I, I just, I'm not dealing with it anymore. I, you know, you get a comfort level with individuals and I'm not saying that they're being dishonest. All I'm saying is it's not on them to do the due diligence. I say it in every video, you know, these are not for financial advice. You need to do your own research, but even I can get caught up in, um, you know, I guess you can call it greed. That's what people are saying in my comments. So I want to tell you all, I appreciate many of you have been kind. Um, nobody could be harder on me than I've been on myself, but some people have gave it a shot. And quite frankly, I don't know what to say. I don't blame them. You know, this it's truly, it's just on me. It's my responsibility. And um, so I'm going to look forward to do better. I have to learn from it. I don't have any other choice. And um, in the future, hopefully I'm more uh, aware, more cautious. Okay. Uh, I will tell you about this. Now, this just to give you a little bit of perspective and why I'm just going to let this go and move on with my life. It's not going to do me any good. 
to hang on to it and beat myself up. But I saw two things today that, again, caused me to think and reflect okay, about how good my life actually is. And so um, the first one was I have a friend who was on a ventilator for six weeks. He um, was well known in our community, is a, a good, good person, healthiest person you've ever met. Um, young, like 45 years old and got COVID, end up on a ventilator. I didn't think he was going to make it at one point. And then he pulled through. He was supposed to do 90 days in a rehab facility. And he was a strong, strong person, person that spent a lot of time outdoors, uh, just really a, a good fit person. And today, two weeks after they told him it would be 90 days of him being in a care facility, he walked in to our church and um, sat down with his family and it almost made me cry. I mean, the guy's been through a lot, but it reminds me I need to be thankful for what I do have. And um, I'm thankful that he's doing well. Then I had friends visit me this afternoon who, again, young mother, 43 years old. These kids are younger. They're my kid's age, but um, their 43 year old mother had multiple illnesses, ended up getting sick put in the hospital, was going to need an amputation, then had a stroke, and then died with COVID, of all things. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible run of health. But it caused me to reflect, and again, be thankful for what I do have, thankful to, for time with my family, thankful for my health. These other things will be able to recover from. There are some things that are impossible to come back from. So um, anyway... I'm going to go ahead and finish with my reflections. And the reflections are going to be weak because I'm starting a new reflections page. Okay. So I put in my token quantity when I started my show prep. That took about 30 minutes. I entered my ending qu uh, quantity. And during my show prep or in less than an hour, I will receive or have received 16,738,000 tokens. Uh, through the reflections. If you haven't seen this, all you have to do is hold Saitama in the correct wallet. There are some centralized exchanges that aren't participating, but if you're holding in a DeFi wallet, you're holding in L Bank, um, you get reflections. 2% of every buy and sell transaction is reflected back or given back to people holding Saitama, proportionate to what your holdings are. So I'm 78 cents back towards the good. Um, 16 million. That's a happy note to end on. It's been a brutal day. I just can't dwell on it forever. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your kindness. I hope that I was able to save some other people from getting scammed. Many, many people in the comments said they were scammed in the same way. Some of them today with the same scam. So hopefully we were able to prevent some other people from getting taken advantage of. I always appreciate you guys. I appreciate your kindness. I appreciate your positivity. Check back with me tomorrow. We'll watch our uh, Saitama stacks grow together.